Hello, everyone. Uh, yeah, thanks for, thanks for um, uh, making it to this talk. So uh, my name is Adrian. I'm the head of ML Serving at Selden. Um, what I do there is basically build tools that uh, let people serve and deploy machine learning models easily. Uh, however, before that, most of my career has been spent on classic software engineering, so more of like your normal uh, like back-end uh, and front-end engineering, uh, which is why um, something that has always called out a lot to my attention is how, how little time we spend talking about security in machine learning. And up to the point where if you check out uh, uh, most of the, some of the, of the most common frameworks, you see key challenges being recommended as best practices. Today we're going to be talking about some of those, uh, uh, and as, as well as some ways uh, to mitigate it. Uh, I think. But yeah, so uh, as you can see, so uh, uh, basically we are going to focus today on the, some of the risk uh, introduced by some by machine learning artifacts. So uh, uh, for those of you who may not be familiar with it, uh, uh, Pickle is, is Python's native uh, serialization format. So uh, basically anything in Python can be serialized into a Pickle object. Uh, functions in Python are also objects, which means they can also be serialized in a pickle. And basically, this makes for a really powerful tool, which is why most uh, frameworks, most machine learning frameworks, uh, uh, use that. And when I say most of them, is pretty much not all of them, but some of the most common ones, definitely. So uh, here we see three examples of usage of pickle uh, uh, on the wild. So uh, on one hand, you see scikit-learn. So scikit-learn, very common framework, maybe not the most powerful of them, but uh, is one where, for example, pickles are recommended as the way to go. They even acknowledge that this is not great, and we'll see why this is not great in a second, but it's what they recommend. There is no current alternative, official alternative to that. And we even see like more, uh, I guess, mature frameworks also doing the same thing. So we how we see an example for Keras, that, uh, showing how it also uses pickles under the hood. And then we also see an example with Torch, seeing how it also uses pickles under the hood. Now, um, as I said before, pickles can serialize any Python object. Functions are also objects in Python, so they can also serialize that. Because of how pickles are designed, the way to uh, load that back into the runtime is basically by interpreting that code. And probably now, uh, many alarms will start to sound in your head, and if not, they, they should. Uh, we're talking about serializing anything, including code, and then running it when we unload it. So uh, any kind of arbitrary code executions would fall into this category. And we'll see an example uh, uh, more in detail about how this would apply to machine learning workloads in a second. But yeah, basically this, this talk is focused on, on this nascent field of MLSecOps, which is uh, nothing more than the extension of the standard DevSecOps to uh, include machine learning workloads. Um, last year, we, uh, uh, we presented a talk here in, in KubeCon where we basically over, uh, covered some of the top 10 uh, uh, MLSecOps vulnerabilities. This list of top 10 vulnerabilities is basically something that the LFAI started working on uh, uh, a year ago or so, a year and a half ago, uh, as part of uh, a working group that they set up on MLSecOps. And basically, what the, the goal here was to uh, sort of uh, uh, publish something similar to the OWASP top 10 for web vulnerabilities for people to take into account when they design and build machine learning systems. Since last year, well, actually, just to also like uh, uh, contextualize this talk today on this list, uh, today we're just going to focus on number three there, so artifact exploit injection. If you want to know more about the other ones, you can check out the talk from last year. But yeah, compared to last year, uh, some good news have happened. Now it's not just the LFAI, basically looking into the MLSecOps problem. We also have other major uh, organizations also looking into this. So OWASP, uh, for example, now has already published a top 10 for LLMs. And I think they were also publishing like a more general uh, MLOps uh, top 10 uh, security vulnerabilities as well. Uh, MITRE, which is also like a massive uh, uh, name in the security world, has also published now a, 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 a catalog of attacks into machine learning systems, uh, attack vectors. Uh, 
it is true that some of these are basically just derived from the fact that machine learning systems, MLOP systems, are nothing else than, machine, than software systems. So they have the same sort of, of vulnerabilities. However, uh, uh, the ones that basically don't have like the red symbol next to it are specific to machine learning workloads. So there is definitely something specific here that we should take into account that maybe at the moment we are not. Uh, alongside that catalog, MITRE has uh, a few months ago also published a list of mitigations of how to address some of those attack vectors. So uh, today we're going to focus on the security aspects introduced by Pickles and more widely uh, machine learning artifacts. Uh, but that's not to say that besides the security issues, Pickles also suffer, suffer from way older issues uh, that should make us reconsider whether they are the right tool for the job. So on one hand, they are super sensitive to the version of Python. An artifact that has been serialized with Pickle with Python 3.8 probably won't work with Python, with some tweets, uh, 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 like a server running Python 3.10. Likewise, uh, uh, frameworks are also very sensitive to, to, to versioning. So it's not just about the version of Python, it's also the version of the framework. Uh, so for example here, like you can see an example of a stack trace uh, 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 showing what happens when you try to load a pickle generated with a different version of scikit-learn uh, using a different version, like a newer version of scikit-learn. And, and basically, it's just gibberish. It's really hard to travel to these kind of issues. So as you can see, uh, I love pickles. I haven't wasted uh, any time at all working with pickles. Uh, and you should love them too. They're great. So uh, what we're going to see now is how pickles, how these, how these problems that pickles expose can impact your machine learning workloads. Uh, before doing that, though, uh, basically to make sure that we are all on the same page, when we talk about an MLOps uh, uh, system, and generally, we will have something like this. So basically, you have, uh, 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 this is like, uh, uh, I guess, drawing in the axis of the model life cycle. Generally, you start with some training data. Uh, with that training data, you have either data scientists or, or like CI pipelines uh, uh, building uh, uh, artifacts, building models, training models out of that data. that They can get serialized into artifacts. These artifacts then make it into an artifact store and eventually make their way into your serving infrastructure, where most likely than not, they will be loaded by a microservice, and which will load that model back and then run inference on that. If we go into the microservice, what generally happens is, well, you have uh, like some kind of Docker container um, loading that pickle artifact and then exposing some kind of real-time API to uh, run inference. Something worth clarifying as well. In this diagram, so you can see some logos. Uh, this is vendor agnostic. Like this same sort of architecture, you would see it with any kind of vendor, with any kind of, of tooling that you choose. Uh, so you can ignore those logos. So with that in mind, let's see an example now of how basically a, a, a malicious pickle, a poison pickle could uh, impact you when you load it on that microservice. So if we now go to this notebook, cool. Uh, what we're going to do here is first we're going to train a, a simple scikit-learn model. So uh, we do that. Um, we then save it, serialize it. In this case, you can see that we are serializing it using a library called joblib. Uh, Jubilee basically uses pickle under the hood. So uh, it's pretty much the same thing. Now, if we look into what uh, Jubilee, uh, what that pickle artifact has, is, is you can see some references here to Python code, but it's basically something where uh, it would be very hard to know if something is, is, is weird or is bad. What we're going to do next is we're going to serve it. So uh, in our case, we're going to load it with, with ML server, which is basically a, a, an inference server it's very easy to, to, to deploy as a microservice. So uh, I've already have this running in the background, so I already have my, my ML server instance running my model. So if we now run inference, uh, uh, you can see that it just returns. So we send some data, and we got some data back, great. Now we're going to poison it. So in this case, what we're going to do is basically uh, tweak Python, some of the Python internals to make sure that when we serialize this, uh, 
what we do is the code that we generate instead is uh, the equivalent of dumping the environment variables into a file. So we do this, and now if we look at the artifact, is still some queries. So same as before. In this case, it's quite like quite uh, uh, quite rough, uh, but you could definitely build something more subtle that would be even harder uh, to detect. So now we're going to try to load it back. So uh, we have modified our artifact. We try to reload it. Everything seems fine. But now if we check out uh, this file, we can basically see that our malicious artifact has now dumped our whole environment. So, OK, pickles may not be great. What we have seen is, on one hand, how easy it is to poison a pickle artifact. On the other hand, how hard it is to detect that it has been poisoned. What do we do instead? So one option is to see if we can generate, let's say, higher quality pickles. So how do we do that? On one hand, we have tools like scopes that basically try to mitigate some of the risk introduced by pickle by uh, removing for the generated artifact all the, thing, all the extra functionality that pickle provides, all the extra power that pickle provides, and that can cause troubles. It doesn't remove all of them, though, because then uh, basically tools like scikit-learn wouldn't work. Other option is just, OK, let's not use Pickle. Let's use something like Onyx. So Onyx is uh, like a more descriptive um, format to serialize machine learning models, uh, which don't involve loading and running arbitrary code. If we have a look back at our infrastructure, what we have now is basically the same sort of thing just that now we have cooler pickles. Great. Is that the end of it, though? There is, so basically the question now is, OK, we have now a, let's assume that the scopes is great. Let's assume that it removes all the risks. Or let's assume that we are using Onyx. We have now artifacts that are safe from the DevSecOps point of view. They are not going to run arbitrary code. They are not going to um, dump all of our data. But are they safe also from the MLSecOps point of view? What we see here uh, is an example. It's an example attack that was done by researchers at a company called Mithril Security, where they basically surgically modified an LLM to spread misinformation. I think in this case, what they, what they took was that the answer to the question of who was the first person in the moon was Yuri Gagarin instead of Neil Armstrong. They pushed that to Hugging Face, to Hugging Face Hub, and as they expected, many people basically just uh, downloaded that model and started using it. Because that model, from most angles, is correct. It's very hard to detect if it has been tweaked that way. And so in this case, basically, this attack depended on people trusting that a model uploaded by, by someone called Mr. Security was safe. But basically, what it shows is how easy it is to tweak an artifact to make it insecure, even though it's completely safe from a DevSecOps perspective. So what do we do instead? Basically, what we have seen is that it's very hard to detect if an artifact can be harmful. So what we need instead is trust or discard mechanisms throughout the whole machine learning model lifecycle. This is also aligned with basically the way that MITRE suggest on how to mitigate these sort of problems. So if we look back at our infrastructure diagram, we want, OK, let's just use cooler pickles. That's fine. But let's just avoid that they get tampered throughout their model lifecycle. And you may say, well, let's just sign the artifacts. And let's just check the signature at, at deployment time. And that's it, right? Problem then comes with who then validates that the signature that you created for your artifact is correct. And then who validates that, this, that the signature for the signature of the artifact is also correct. And so on and so forth. So you basically have a recursion problem. Uh, if you check out the like, DevSecOps literature, this is basically known as, like, or it's basically refers like turtles all the way down. Um, because in theory, uh, there's that, this legend that the world is held by a turtle, and that turtle can just stay, stay in thin air, so it probably stays on top of another bigger turtle, and so on. How do we solve for that? 
we basically look back to the DevOps literature. As with many other problems in MLOps, it has already been solved in the DevOps world. The question is how to adapt that solution to our use case. So if we look back at DevSecOps best practices, we will see a lot of resources around supply chain security. If you check out, for example, the CMCF landscape, you will see tons of projects that are related to supply chain security. So let's just look back at that, and let's see how we can apply it to MLOps. So if we look at any uh, uh, supply chain security guide, what we will see is that any process, any supply chain process, uh, has three main components. It has artifacts, it has metadata about those artifacts, and it has attestations that verify, that validate, that that metadata and those artifacts are to be trusted. And then it has policies that verify that those attestations are correct. If we look at how that applies to our use case, artifacts are obvious. So artifacts will be our machine learning models. Be, be, be that Pickles, be that Onyx, whatever it is. Metadata then falls, generally falls into one of three categories. So on one hand, you have provenance data. This is all, these three categories is basically what is defined by classic uh, DevSecOps literature. Uh, but if we follow that guide, we have on one hand provenance data. Provenance data, in our case, could be things like who trained this model, or when did they train it, or what training pipeline did they use. Uh, software bill of materials, in our case, could be things like what data set was used, or what package dependencies does the model have. Um, for the first one, for provenance data, there is no sort of a standard uh, agreed on what that should include in machine learning workloads. For software bill of materials, though, there is good news. There are like a couple of working groups looking into this. Uh, one of them is Cyclone DX, the other one is SPDX, uh, that are trying to decide to agree on, on, on a standard on how, how this should be extended to machine learning workloads. And then lastly, uh, we could also have vulnerability scan reports. So maybe our model depends on scikit-learn uh, 1.0, and we know it has a vulnerability, so we just acknowledge it, and we, uh, we just acknowledge and, and mention that it may not be harmful to our use case. And then lastly, we have attestations. Attestations would be uh, the signatures that would come, that would, uh, uh, make, that would guarantee that we can trust this metadata and these artifacts. So how do we do this attestation? So we can basically just rely on existing projects. One of them, one a very popular tool uh, uh, in, in the DevOps world is Sixter. Sixter lets you generate uh, signatures and validate them on runtime in a secure way. Sixter is actually like a whole suite of projects, of products, sorry, projects. Uh, so one of them is Fullshare. Fullshare is basically a free certificate authority, so it would be the one generating your artifacts. You would then have Record. Record is a ledger where every art signature that you generate goes to. And basically this is how Sixter goes around this recurrency problem, uh, this recursive, recursiveness problem. Uh, things generated with Fullshare will go into Record, and then at runtime you can basically check that this signature exists in record, so you can trust it. Every signature that uh, Sixter generates goes uh, validated against an, an OIDC gateway, against an, uh, um, an identity coming from that OIDC gateway. That way, you also, you can see this as a sort of metadata that already comes for free, telling you who created that model. Uh, this is quite complex, quite a lot of moving pieces. Good thing is that Sixter actually provides many hosted versions of this, which is, are good enough for tests and for demos and to just try it out, which is basically what we're gonna do now. Uh, but before that, just to like review how our goal uh, system would look like, we would keep the same sort of, of infrastructure where we generate our pickles, we just lock them to make sure they don't get modified, with the only difference that now the signature gets generated by Sixter and we use Sixter to validate it at runtime, at chirping time. So let's see how that would look like in practice. So if we extend our previous example, uh, what we're gonna do now is uh, we're gonna train, again, uh, an artifact. I'm just train that. We're gonna save it. And what we're gonna do now is sign it. It's one of the main changes that we will do to compare to the previous pro process, to the naive process. So we use Sixter. Sixter also comes with some CLIs some libraries that we can just use. We sign it, and uh, what should happen now, if Wi-Fi works, is that it will take me to the uh, OIDC gateway 
that Sixtor hosts, which is good enough for testing. Generally, in production, you would obviously just uh, uh, link this with your internal OIDC gateway. So we just tell it, okay, use my Google authentic, uh, uh, identity. Cool, it's all done. And if we look at the, uh, the files that, it were, that it generated, on one hand, we have the same model that Joplib that we had before on the naive case, but now we also have some signatures that go along with it. We now try to validate it, to verify it. Um, as you can see here, I would just use, I, would, uh, I, I don't just want to verify that the model hasn't been tampered, I want to validate that it was created by myself. So we verify it, it's all good. Now let's try to modify it. So we're gonna do something very similar to what we did before, and we're gonna tweak that, and did it finish? Cool. And we're gonna now try to verify it. And as we expect, it just fails saying that the signature is invalid because we modified that file so the signature is no longer valid. So that's all working locally. How would this work in once we deploy it in our serving infrastructure? So what we're gonna do is basically tweak ML server. We're gonna extend the, one of the runtimes that it comes with out of the box to verify that. And to do that, we're basically just gonna choose, we're just gonna use the Sixter SDK to, to verify that. And I'm not gonna dive too much in the code. You, will, you can check these resources later. But basically the key thing is that we just want here to verify a cell grid. So basically something, doing something similar to what the CLI does. So that's already running in our server. So let's try it out. Uh, let's first list the models that are available. So we can see three of them. We have first the tamper model uh, that we just modified. Sorry. We also have the naive model, which was the, the case that, that we saw before so without any kind of signatures. And then we have the good model, which is the model that works as expected and has signatures to, vary, to verify it. So let's try first loading the good model. It all works well, signature passes, so it's all good. Let's now try to load the naive model. This is the same model that we saw before. So as expected, it still dumps this pound txt file with all of our environment. And last, we're just gonna try to load the tamper model that includes the six store signatures. So we try to load it, and as we expect, it just fails with this verification error. The signature is now invalid, and we can verify that the pound.txt file didn't get created. So, this is good enough for a demo. Uh, unfortunately though, if we were to take this to a production, to a full production uh, use case, there will be more things to, 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 to work on. Uh, so basically one of the key points from this talk would be uh, that there are, there is a still a lot of work to do. So on one hand, there are not many serving vendors that currently have provide the ability to apply policies. Uh, there are some like Mr. Security which are working on it. So basically a policy would be verifying this automatically every time we serve a model. Uh, there are also very few integrations with other OSS projects that uh, generate these signatures or generate this metadata out of the box. So it would be great if people like uh, TensorFlow basically uh, try to promote these sort of best practices. Um, and we still see frameworks like Scikit-learn, which no, don't provide any other alternative to Pickle. So definitely there is still work uh, to do. Um, but yeah, if you are interested in joining the discussion or in learning more, you can always join the ML SecOps Working Group, uh, which is part of the Linux Foundation for AI and Data. Uh, it joins monthly, so everyone is welcome to attend. And yeah, hope you enjoyed this talk. I hope you find the content useful, and thank you very much. We have about five minutes for questions. There's a mic in the middle of the room. Uh, feel free to walk up to the mic if you have questions. I can also pass the mic around. Great talk. Um, just a quick question. If a model were being like refined or retrained, uh, would you need like a transit set of signatures or like attestations? Like how would that work? Have you thought about that? Sure. If you were to retrain a model you would end up with a new artifact that you would need to sign again. Um, generally, like this retraining would happen in some sort of pipeline 
So basically what you want to verify is that the artifact was created by a component that you trust. And this is sort of like the structure discard process. Like in general, you want signatures and you want supply chain on everything. So the Kubernetes manifests that are deploying that pipeline running with Argo workflow. Those also need in theory to be verified with a supply chain process. There are a lot of tools like Kiverno that basically provide you that. But basically you want everything that, you ha that happens in your cluster to, to be verified. Would you need like the starting model or like the initial model to be verified as well? So like you're like, this um, new model is derived from this old model and, and so on, right? So it seems like you might want like, yeah. a transitive attestation. Yeah, sure, if you're fine, fine tuning, yeah, if you're fine tuning an existing model, then yeah, for sure. Yeah, you would need to trust that as well because otherwise uh, you could end up with a case like um, the, the, the use case that Mitchell Security uh, looked at. Like you're maybe pulling a model from Hugging Face Hub and you don't know what is inside the artifact. Like this problem with pickles seems general to like, like protocol buffers and like any other type of like serialization format. So I'm curious if you know like what other folks do for like just kind of storing like documents in like serialized format and so on. Well, Is, like, I mean, a similar type of thing that's yeah. going on. Yeah. Oh, I mean, the problems with pickles are like some of those are very specific to pickles, like. Generally, with documents, you don't expect that you can run arbitrary code executions. You still, uh, PDF had some vulnerabilities like that in the past. Um, but yeah, it's something that can affect in general to anything you run and you load on the cluster. And we saw that recently as well with like the uh, log4j vulnerability. Uh, every time you accept input from the outside, you have that risk. And there are different ways to mitigate that. Sometimes it will be, you will be able to, do, uh, to have scanning tools in place. Sometimes uh, you will need to have discard, trust or discard mechanisms. Generally, you want all of them. You, you want to add as many security layers as you, want, as you can. Thanks again for the great right. presentation. Thank you.